Max? What the if I ha- said we have the 1998 Bassmaster Classic champion on the line? What would you say? You're a horrible producer, so I would say no. <laughs> He's like the Don Shula of bass fishing. Can we get his picture? No, we can't. Joining us live via phone, the 1998 Bassmaster Classic champion, Mr. Denny Brower. Woo! Hey. De- you boys are not right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel like a kid in a candy store right now. I, I can't believe oh, it. easy now. Don't get cured. Don't go slobbery on me. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was a kid growing up, one of my big inspirations, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this professionally, uh, was 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 Denny? Now you're really making me feel old. Hey, <laughs> hey Denny, get out the bib because here comes some more slobber. So here's another. <laughs> so when, when, bib. When, when Mike, uh. when Mike, uh, Brian, the producer, and I were young in our early twenties, our peers were out at the bars. They were picking up women. We were at a VFW pitching jigs at the coffee mugs. The classic uh, was kind of like the albatross around my neck. It was uh, one thing in my career that, uh, you know, just kept eluding me. I had, uh, I don't know, a few seconds and events that uh, if they had just, you know, went a little more right, everything would have been good and I'd have got that monkey off my back. But it just seemed like every classic, you almost got to where you, you dreaded it because you're going to get the same old question, is this the year you're going to finally win the thing so when i did finally win it it was uh you know just like my career was kind of complete because it was that it's the the best gem i guess in our industry uh if you look at the total package that comes with it and i don't think a career is complete unless you do win it so i'd made a pass down in practice and had zero bites and i was about halfway through the stretch flipping a jig and I thought man I need to try something different and that was back when we just started experimenting with flipping tubes and so I picked a tube up in the first tree I came to I got bit and shook that fish off and turned the boat around and went back to a tree that I just thoroughly fished and on the first flip got bit again so it was really a real preference that the fish had or you know what bait they wanted and I imagine it was because there were so many shad that moved up into the area the pressure waves of the two probably uh, emulated the shad a little bit more than a crawfish after that uh, classic win we sat down and we designed a two strictly for flipping with striking and and that really started that game I was a co-angler at a, a 1993 a bass <laughs> top 150 uh, it was the first event I have ever, ever fished ever from the back of the boat. It was an amazing experience, but I, I had never even been in a bass boat up to that point, Pete. And uh, the first day at the meeting, I draw out, and they announce my name, and they say, uh, Mike Iconelli, New Jersey, uh, Tommy Biffle, Oklahoma, boat number 70, oh 70-whatever. <laughs> uh, and so I'm stoked because Tommy's another one like, you know, man, this is going to be an amazing day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back. I'm going to learn so much. And um, I remember, you know, meeting him at the ramp, getting in his boat. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, uh, I'm, but you know, but I'm, I'm just ready to have an amazing day. I'm, re- I know I'm going to see some incredible things. I'm going to learn a lot. And he said, you know, we're going to be flipping as soon as that sun gets high. We're going to be flipping docks. And I'm like, this is great. But the first hour, I want to go and fish some riprap uh, with a top water to see if we can get a couple extra fish in the morning. And we went faster than I've ever went in a boat, 60, 70 mile an hour. We probably went about 10 miles to this this riprap causeway, long stretch. And he wanted to start right there at the mouth of it and, and where, where the where the cut through was. And there was a boat there. And so I see him going there and then he kind of did this weird turn and he went all the way to the other end of the bridge, which probably not quite a quarter mile, but we started at the foot of the causeway. and. I didn't even pick. I didn't even pick up my rod yet, and I and I look up, and that boat that was out there in the corner of that causeway is coming straight at us on pad <laughs> and sets down on pad. Denny, do you remember who that guy was? <laughs> I, I have no clue. It was you. It was you, and it was the most amazing thing. Cause think about this: I had never been in a, in a major tournament. I had never been in a bass boat, and here are two of my heroes bickering at each other. <laughs> and I, I won't repeat anything that happened. You, you didn't enter his boat. There were no fisticuffs. But let me tell you, Denny. 
You chased him out of there, man. We, I don't even think we made a cast, and and, uh, and and we left. But that was that was my first experience in a bass tournament. Hey, folks, Mike Gaganelli here. Do you want to see all the hottest new videos I've created? Do you want to see the latest in tips and tournament tactics? Well, I want you to go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, and you'll have access to the latest and greatest in the Ike fishing world. Subscribe. See you soon.